Oh, yeah, it is your boy back again. Um, of course I'm back again because you're listening to the same podcast you're listening for. This is Koshi Dills with another episode of Hustle Beach. Hustle Beach, where we put the hustle and the muscle in the beach. And um, I got a guest today, right from down the mean streets of Yafo. Uh, let's give it up for Maynard Breslow, everybody. Woo! Woo! Yeah! How's it going, bro? It's going great, man. It's going great. Feeling great. Thanks for having me on. It's uh, also by the time this uploads, it'll be my birthday, so that'll be cool too. It's pretty epic. Um, that's pretty epic. I'm just realizing I, I'm like, if I get any weird sounds, I think it's because I'm connected to the internet. So I'm maybe like d- unconnect for the internet. Yeah. But here we are. We are in Yafo, Israel, and you're on Hustle Beach, which is obviously a rip off of Muscle Beach. But um, you know, the people worked out really hard there. And I'm really interested. So your story starts out in Los Angeles, California, going to Mexico City, which is kind of unheard of. So you guys were, so you come, your background is Ashkenazi, yeah, Jewish, Ashkenazi Jew, Mexican, um, Mexican. My mom was born in Mexico, in Mexico. I did that. She sees more of like the traditional, you know, look in Mexican, whatever. My grandpa was also born in Mexico City, but he's a blonde haired blue eyed Jew from from Kiev. You know, his parents were from Kiev, so got a lot of the diff- different mixed roots. People would come in and... It's uh, a lot of street cred right there, because you're like, yeah, Yo, you're like what, LA, and you're like Mexican Jewish. Chicano, right? baby. I'm Chicano LA, you know, from East, East LA, Mamash, you know. Yeah. Mamash <laughs> so, from East LA, bro. Mamash from East LA. That's funny, <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God, that's so cool. So what was like the first thing you sold in LA? Like when you were growing up? I mean, I'll tell you selling. I, you know, me selling, I remember going back, my first memory of selling something was in Mexico City, actually. Um, so my dad used to, so then my dad sold the clothing stores, moved to Mexico City. He owned some McDonald's in Mexico. My dad was a franchisee for, Mc, for McDonald's. It sounds like a chapter out of like uh, Breaking Bad, like McDonald's in Mexico. Yeah, it really was, dude. Like it was a complete culture shock. I had no idea what to expect. Didn't speak Spanish at all. My dad spark, hardly spoke Spanish. I don't know how, you know, he was just like, okay, we're going to, can I cuss here? Yeah. Cool. All right. Curse we cuss on mine, so it's all good. But uh, but yeah, so he's like, fuck it. We're going to go to Mexico City, open up a McDonald's. And um, but it, so I lived in Mexico City. Like I said, I'm very grateful for my upbringing. I always had a great upbringing. And I was going to the school there with like the president's son and like, you know, um, all, you know, there's like one family that owns the gasoline company and like right, one family you know, that owns like the cell company. Style. Yeah. So like mm-hmm. that kind of shit. And like, you know, obviously in Mexico, it's all about soccer, football, football, mm-hmm. you know? So uh, what I used to do is I used to record the football games and make copies of the tapes and slang the tapes. Really? Yeah. So yeah. like that so was like VHS the first thing. Yeah. And we would also do like recordings, like cassette tapes. We would do like mixtapes and shit. Like I would like come to school with a list of like uh, albums that my dad had and mm-hmm. like have people like make a, a mixtape. And like wow. just come with like all these different songs that they could pick, mm-hmm. and then like I'll go. My dad had a uh, like a CD thing, and I would go and record them. This was back in like ninety two, ninety three. Oh you yeah. Know? So like the beginning of CDs. Yes. You know, so I'd like use the dual cassette CD player to like play the CD and record the cassette and slang the cassettes. Yes, I like, remember that. Yeah. So we would play the CD and then blank tape it. Yeah, exactly. So I'll come in like, you know, take those. orders. I'll we take orders in still. class and then go home, record them, make the cassettes and then come back the next day and, and sell them, you know, for the custom order, whatever somebody had. Right. I used to sell fireworks. That was my thing. I used to sell fireworks. Like I go to Chinatown in, in, in New York and then get them and maybe sell some and sell the candy. And, you know, I just it's funny. I did I that loved. too, man. Because, you know, Calabasas doesn't have fireworks, but being as how I have, uh, you know, the Mexican upbringing, I also have the the cousins, the primos, you know, who grew up in Southgate and Compton. So they had the, they had the fireworks down there, right? The fireworks. So I'd go down there and pick up fireworks and then bring them back to Calabasas and sell them in Calabasas. Really? Yeah. You sold them? Yeah. That's amazing, dude. I'm happy you sold fireworks too. I feel like, (laughs) I feel like, man, sometimes I think I just want to sell some, some, you know. 
bottle rockets, you know what I'm saying? It's some block, but like I remember this dude having a bag of blockbusters, and then they were like, there was blockbusters, there was like M80s, which are smaller than the blockbusters, and that was like a quarter stick of dynamite, and then the pineapples were like a half stick, and I don't know, I don't even know what they were called afterwards, but I used to fiend for him, and I, I loved them. So yeah. I was I was selling like the small stuff, you know. I think it's cool that you're selling your like selling clothing is what a, what a hustle that is. It's just like. I mean, that's been going on since the beginning. Your, you know, your pops wasn't, your grandpa wasn't like the first dude to do that. Your dad did that. Your grandpa did that. My grandpa did that, but my dad took over the store, and um, so he, you know, he ran the operation. My grandpa died in '83, and I was born in '86, and my dad sold it, the company, you know, the the business back in '90, '92. So, but he was that's what he grew up in. You know, same thing, the hustle and learning about that and. Uh, you know, it was great. It, worked. it was it was great. Definitely a good business. I think it's great, man. I think it's just so cool to like close somebody and be like, "Well, you got that for like twenty bucks. Like, I'll buy that for a hundred. I mean, kind of like un it's untapped, really resource of of what you could flip clothing for. You know, sneakers and clothing. I mean, it's, it's it's obviously graduated from now. It's what, like a huge thing. Now it's like the it's you know, massive. I just now it's buying Alibaba and resell it and uh, you know drop shipping and all kinds of different things. You don't even have a you need to have a retail store. What is drop shipping? Is that different than regular shipping? Yeah, drop shipping is something where you have a you're a reseller, right? So bef- you don't even have to have inventory. You can buy you you only thing you have to do is have the the connect the website um, where they're buying it through. Be able to market that website. That's the key, right? So you have to be able to market the website. And then people are buying it from you, but you you're not, and you're receiving the payment. But then automatically, if you have certain automations, it's already being ordered from your drop shipper, and it's being mailed out by them. Yeah, I have that. That's what you do for my merch. Like I don't have the merch here, but you order yeah. it. I send you the site, and then it, they they have a warehouse. I have a warehouse with all my stuff in it. But you have like stuff at the warehouse, right? You have mm-hmm. inventory there. Yeah, I got inventory. Yeah, this, I'm talking about not even having inventory. Like right, right, all right. We right. were drop shipping. Uh, with the struggle, this is where we were drop shipping, um, merch, you know, cups and stuff that we didn't have inventory. They, there's a warehouse in the valley, over in Chatsworth, mm-hmm. that they would, you know, whenever we get an order. Ooh, Chatsworth, that's a really white town. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's talking chat. about LA. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had. There's a warehouse there that we would ship them an order, and somebody would buy a, uh, you know, a mensch, coffee mug. Oh, okay. You know, or the no kvetching coffee mug. Oh. And then they, and then they would ship them off from there. I like that, dude. Oh, yeah. That's right. Because you had a meme, the Jewish meme page. Yeah. The Struggle Israel. The Struggle Israel. If anybody out there heard of the Struggle Israel, shout out to my is boy Alex. The, is it the dot struggle dot Israel? That's it, yeah. Okay. The, it's on Instagram. Now, now defunct, pretty much, Struggle Israel. No, but it's I think it's still there. I think, wait, I just, one rapper... Um, his name's Fat Nick. He's like, he just like, you know, I ain't Jewish, but the drip is real. Like, like you know, he just posted and everyone's like commenting on it. And I'm like, well, this is amazing because the dude's definitely, but he put in a picture of an Israeli flag. And I I thought, man, this would be great for like a Jewish meme page, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, wait, so like, so you're LA dude, Calabasas, and then you were, but you were in Mexico for two years. So, yeah. what, so like you're in Mexico and you're like, how am I, did you ever think like, how am I going to get money in Mexico? Like, did you still hustle there? Because, I mean, you were with your parents and stuff, but you are like, That's where the turning... hustle started, really. Really? But I, didn't, I went there not even speaking the language, right? So, I mean, I guess it's once again here in Yafo in Israel, you know? <clears throat> but uh, there I picked it up pretty quick. You right. know, I picked it up in six months, completely fluent. You know, I'm just uh, lazy about it, living in a little uh, little bubble. So I get to, and, you know, now my business, my, my hustle's in, the, in America, so I talk to Americans all day. <clears throat> but, yeah, being in Mexico was... Crazy, dude. Crazy culture shock um, right away. I think it's just cool that you're growing up and you're like, and that's like, that was part of it. You're like, live there. Like, where are your problems? They live in LA or LA. And like, no, I lived in Mexico and Dallas. Like, yeah. what? Yeah. And now you're in LA because, you know, people in LA are in their own bubble. Oh, yeah. Um, so, okay. So, fast forward. So, you're selling mixtapes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you sell the mixtapes out of your trunk. You got mass- <laughs> master p maynard p um and like man you go where well, you went to college the whole thing whatever yeah Dude, whatever. i went to uc irvine went there um first of all i went to uc pierce anybody from la knows uc pierce okay I went to uh 
community college for three years. Uh huh. And um, three years community college, damn. Yeah, what bro. Happened? I was a smart. I was a smart kid in, in high school, right? I thought, you know, I got into whatever. Got into Berkeley. I wanted to go to USC, and uh, but uh, you know, I was uh, like to have my fun too. So I thought I was I was a smart kid. I didn't have to study in high school. Just show up and get straight A's. I would skip school all the time. Was weed legal in California? Not right? yet. But was it? When during uh, it was yeah it was medically legal it was it's been medically legal since 1986 I've been smoking since um, I was 15 you know since 2002 something like that yeah and uh, what year is it 2020 2020 now I'm you know, <laughs> 2020 now I'm yeah. you know I had, dealing with ADHD I had you know diagnosed with ADHD when I was six years old Ritalin so I was on Ritalin since I was six oh god you know, super like off the wall getting in trouble at school, getting suspended from school all the time, the getting you know, sent home and mm -hmm. the principal and all that fun stuff. But then the principal always loved me and the teachers always loved me because, I don't know, I charmed them. Lovable whatever. guy. But um, So I get away with stuff, which is what happened when I went to college. You know, I was so used to just being able to show up, take my tests, um, show, my, you know, show up, turn in my paper, get an A, get straight A's. And I figured that's what life was about, you know, just showing up, doing shit half-ass, and uh, I'd, I'd be able to slide by. And then I get to college, and I'm like, holy shit, I got to work, man. I, there's like, I remember getting like my first C. I'd never gotten a C in my life, right? And my getting See me so after pissed, class, bro. teacher. You I fucking so, toast. Dude, I was, my dad was so pissed, bro. Like, that was like, that was like the like, end What do you world, expect, dude. dad? You moved me to Mexico City when I was a kid. I fucking hate you. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> it's all your fault. It's all your fault. Mm. Dude, my college experience is the worst. I mean, no, it was great. But, like, I mean, I wrestled and then I just kept getting arrested and going in and out. Yeah, you got the wrestling bill. Yeah, I know. I went to, I'm just, I just came from wrestling practice today nice. in Tel Aviv. It's amazing. Nice. But I'm really interested because if you said that weed wasn't legal, only medical weed, and you're in the cannabis business, and you're not in cannabis business, you're in like, you're in like the, what is it called? Is it the cannabis business? Is it CBD business? Is yeah, it it's the... all under one umbrella. So cannabis is the plant, but then within cannabis, there's the marijuana. What is the business called? And What's the industry called? The cannabis industry? Cannabis industry. Okay, cannabis so industry. So now I've turned my love for weed since I was, you know, 15 years old into a completely, now that's my job. Like that's, it was my, that was my second thing that I, or third thing that I sold, by the way, you know, was, uh, weed. was the weed. Weed. The weed when I was in high school. That was, I sold that was my next entrepreneur um, venture. Yeah, <laughs> you did it in high school. This is interesting. Yeah, I didn't do it in high school, but it's you know, whatever. I mean, what an old form of. I wouldn't recommend if you're listening. Don't. I don't know if it's really great to sell weed the way we sold weed. No, but, definitely not. Uh, yeah. Definitely not. And if you're in L.A. or Colorado or now Illinois, right? If you're in Chicago, you can just walk, walk right in with your ID and just uh, get just it buy in weed. The store, man. You know, I mean, or if you want to. That's the whole thing, right? In the cannabis industry, the problem now is I had that guns pulled on. I had guns pulled on me by undercover police for like mm, a joint of weed, you know. Fun. What year? You, know, you got to play that game. What year was that? Like not recently. Oh, yeah, know? that shit. I mean, that shit goes down still, man. Because the whole thing is like, because it's legal in certain states. Guess what? Those legal states, everybody's getting paid. They're getting taxed up the ass, right? So that even drives the black market up even more, right? So in LA, for instance. Three fourths of dispensaries are actually illegal dispensaries. Really? A lot of people don't realize that. Really? Because yeah, I mean, there was what? a really shady one by me in Koreatown. There's always people like almost under arrest, and I'm like, I know that one dude is like banging, and like he's always in my apartment building, and I'm like, God, this guy is obviously so sus. You know, I looked at him, and I'm like, Yeah, of course. And all the weed places too. Like, if the weed place looks illegal. It's illegal. It, it, yeah. There's like, like shady ass places, bro. Yeah, there's, there's like shady, I mean, shady I guess the places. weed is, it's not like the weed is fake or something. No. But it's just like. It's the same weed. Just, you know, it's the same weed, but it's just no, they don't have the official stamp. It's kind of similar to like the kosh root. Yeah. <laughs> it it really, I mean, yeah, it really is in a lot of ways. I mean, it, it you, have to, you have to pay. You have the, to pay the government to say that you, to you have to pay them to get an application. Like, yeah. You have to pay them for every single time that you get, that you sell something. And guess what? Everybody has to pay it. And they want to track every single gram that goes down from the grower all the way down to the sale. So it makes so sense. See the sale. If they're, yeah. So you have to have, you know, um, they have something called metric where they track it all. And um, if you're not compliant, they shut your ass down. And uh, so people are like, why would I want to be compliant when I can just keep doing what I've been doing for the last 20 years? Right, exactly. Now, isn't it... How good? 
So what has like the cannabis industry grown into? Because now they have, coming from someone who doesn't smoke, I'm just like, well, you have hemp, you have, you know, like pills, food, liquid. You we have, are in the baby, baby stages of everything, really. We are, because like you said, hemp. Hemp is the future in terms of, you know, you want to get, get into it, you know, hemp. Cannabis, marijuana, everything's been prohibition since 1937. And the reason why it was is two reasons. First of all, it was a racist, um, you know, it had to do with racism, had to do with Mexicans wanting mm. to, you know, and black people and um, wanting to put them down and to associate the drug uh, with those cultures and associate all the um, the negativity associated with it, you know. with uh, Mexicans created weed. Yeah, Mexicans created weed. And, uh, <laughs> Guess what? They're gonna, they're gonna they're gonna rape you, and you know right, if, right, you, right. if you smoke weed, all that stuff's gonna happen. Yeah, right. And um, but also it had to do with uh, the the, it's disrupting plant. it's disrupting industries, right? So that's where fuel comes in, fossil fuel. The paper industry was a huge industry that wanted to do away with with hemp, right? The lumber industry. All you talk about these industries that are huge players. That's where the motivation really came from back in the 1930s. It had to do with you can get all this stuff from hemp. So right now we talk a lot about obviously the weed. We talk about the, the medical marijuana. We talk about the recreational marijuana. And now we talk a lot about the CBD and we talk about the cannabinoids. But really the real game player is going to be down the line when we're talking about the fibers. We're talking about the fuel. Um, we're talking about all, all the other I mean, I could drive utilities. a Tesla on weed. Straight up. Bro. You, <laughs> just, just you're just going to throw some hemp. Yeah, some hemp yeah. plants. I mean, it goes a little bit more into Throw an eighth in the right, tank. Yeah, yeah, just rolling, <laughs> It's yeah, kinda... so it's it's still in the baby stages, and people, you know, it's still a long way to go. Obviously, in a lot of different ways, um, but yeah, it's it's a fun place to be. Do you ever think you just call back and like, oh, so what did my son do with his life? Like, oh, he sells weed, you know, professionally. Or, you know, you know it's like, so you know, funny, man. Because like, I, I always kind of wonder. My dad. So I remember, I was 16, 17 years old. I'm playing hockey, right? And we used to all in the hockey before our hockey games or practice, definitely before practice, and definitely after practice for sure. We'd all go in, chill in the locker room or chill in the parking lot and, and blaze up, right? So then it became a problem because we started losing a bunch of games. We we're a bunch of talented kids. We were all really good. Mm. And so we had a parent meeting, right? We had a parent meeting and all the parents are well, talking. Well, not you. The, you're the other parents. Yeah, yeah, it was the parents and the players and the coaches. And the coaches stood up and said, we have a weed problem on our team, right? And my dad specifically got up. And was like, because my dad had no idea smoked. Meanwhile, I'm like selling, right? I'm like selling to all the kids on the on the team. And your dad's like, and my dad my stood son. up. Yeah, my dad stood up and had a whole like, you know, mo monologue about how is this going on and blah blah blah, and you need to have control of your kids and all this shit. And then a few weeks later, I got caught selling weed, right? And like my, my dad was like, "You let me stand up in front of the team and tell them all." And blah, blah blah. He was so pissed. He didn't talk to me for so long. But now, yeah, I mean, now it's like on my LinkedIn, right? Now it's like it's I have my own, I have a podcast, and it, yeah, it's out in the open. You know, this is what I do. This is what I. This is what the industry I'm involved in, and it's a completely different thing. And my dad uses CBD for his pain and for other things going on, and. Um, you, you know, the, he uses CBD topicals for his art, for arthritis stuff, uh, you know, and uh, carpal about, tunnel and stuff like that. And I was thinking about getting my mom some of that CBD oil. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to have good. weed in it. It, it doesn't. doesn't. No, I mean, some so, do. Well, so the whole thing is that, so yeah, I mean, the full spectrum, then we get into full spectrum, broad spectrum, isolate. What does that mean? So full spectrum means like all the cannabinoids out of the hemp plant. And in order to be federally legal now in the United States, it has to be less than 0.3% THC. So it's not enough to get you high, right? But the full spectrum creates this entourage effect where it actually binds to your cells easier. We have an endocannabinoid system. That Say what? An has. endocannabinoid system. That's Can right. Cannabinoid. Endocannabinoid system. It's actually the third thing that your body develops in the fetus. All mammals have it. And uh, we're seeing a lot of, uh, we basically the receptors have been dormant for the last 80 years because we haven't been using it um, properly. It used to be something that we'd get uh, in our feed, right, and with our with our food, because animals were eating it, right. It wasn't something that they were chopping down hemp just because it was hemp. It was something that grew freely. Um, but but yeah. it's a whole thing. It's a whole racket now, dude. Billions and billions of dollars on cannabis, and yeah. people that aren't even like. I mean, I just 
not that everyone who does drugs is a degenerate, but when I, it was just the way I was first introduced to even having weed, I was under arrest by undercover cops with guns drawn on me for mm -hmm. weed. So I've always associated in the back of my mind as something really negative. But obviously it's really, you know, people listen to my music and they're on weed and whatever, smoking weed or whatever you want to call it. And people are, I mean, the majority of Israel smokes weed, I think. No doubt, and it's not legal here, you know, today. Uh, so I use CBD. Mm -hmm. uh, I use CBD for anxiety and for ADHD. Mm -hmm. And um, and today I had to go get my CBD from some dude that I met online, and he had it downstairs, and it's not legal. All the research comes from, from Israel, right? 40 years of research, we know how good it is, and yet the government doesn't want... We've done more in America to legalize them than they've done here, right? So I can walk into any store in America and buy some CBD and you gotta do your research and find out which one is good and which one isn't. But over here, you gotta meet up with the guy downstairs in his car, you know what I mean? And people are smoking this stuff. So, and, uh, and, and meanwhile, there's people- They're who, smoking this stuff. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> incredible. And, and meanwhile, like you said, there's a few years ago, there's guns drawn and still at times there's still guns drawn and people come in taken to jail and meanwhile there's people sitting in jail right now um who are talking about a racist system people who are probably brown and black sitting in jail for non-violent uh marijuana crimes meanwhile we're having conventions across the united states with dudes in suits well-funded who want to get in the industry or who are in the industry and making money off of this thing right yeah and we still got people sitting in jail for it say la vie man Dude. Short game's unforgiving. This is a, it's a big problem, bro. It's a big problem. So that's where is the it really big are. in Israel. Like, is is can is like cannabis the big thing in Israel? It is. It is a big, actually one of the biggest um, conferences. Shout out to Saul K, the Canatech, and uh, here in Israel, it's one of the biggest ones in the world. People come around the world to come to Tel Aviv for this because. In Israel is viewed as a world leader in cannabis because of our research. Because research has been suppressed but in America. We, we can't bring weed on the plane to come over here. No. no, it's like not allowed. But you know, you bring some cartridges, you'll probably be away. Probably you'll get away with it. Yeah, you know, you got it. Just get it past. You get it past the Mossad yeah, security. I mean, you know, we, uh, <laughs> Did I? Uh, my brother-in-law brought me a brought me a vial of CBD. You know, nice lady coming on the plane with CBD. No problem. You know. So it's just a matter of, yeah, you know, don't come with flour. Definitely you can't come with flour. Um, that's for sure not. He but, doesn't um, mean flowers, guys, like from the Rose store yeah, or Valentine's yeah, yeah. Day. He means uh, the weed. Yeah, the weed, the buds. <laughs> the pot. Don't be bringing no um, buds on no planes. Hold on, pause for a second. Dude, it's your birthday today. Yeah! Hey, mazel tov. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So wait, so what, how old did you turn? 34, baby. Okay, good year, bro. February 12th, 1986. It was 86, a Wednesday, it, and today is a Wednesday. 86 was a good year. Yeah, it was a great year. Yeah. I love 86 it. 86 is a solid year. So now you're going to be 34. Do you ever think, like, I'm 34. I've got to do something. I'm 35, because I'm going to be 35. And then you'd be like, you know what? I'm 35. I'm going to be 40. Do I? You know what? I honestly don't, man. I The way I live my life now is like, Talk about one day at a time. I live my life also one day at a time, one moment at a time. I also, even though we sit here talking about cannabis, you know, I myself have, uh, have a good history and recovery, 12 steps, still have a, uh, you know, it's funny when people ask who you call him, I call him my mentor, right? But really he's my sponsor. All right, so everything's one day at a time and that's the way I live my life is also one day at a time. So um, I don't really like have like a thing where it's like, I have to have this. Of course I have goals that I want to achieve yearly. I have things that I want to achieve um, but like, I have to have this by 40 or I have to be, do this by 30. You know, I, I went through that little bit, you know, I remember being 28 and being like, I'm about to be 30 and I don't have this and that. I'm still young as shit, man. I'm so young, dude. 34 years old is so young, yeah. especially in being an 45 is young. Hustle Beach. That's what I'm saying. Can you imagine where I'm going to be 10 years from now? I'm really stoked. Damn. I'm really stoked where I'm at now. I'm really stoked with what I got going on now. Uh, I've been working, you know entrepreneurship for eight years seven years you know working on businesses freelancing learning trades um you know having businesses so to answer your question and uh and in a short the short man what the question you was. said what was the goal you know do i have goals you know being 34 or 40 you i know, said i said that that's yeah, awesome that's okay yeah you know i guess the goal the thing is is um 
be better than I was yesterday. You know, progress over perfection. Dude, it's good. No, it's good. It's good to hear that because it's like, um, I don't know, in any business, you know, and with the cannabis, music, health, you know, fitness, um, you know, writers, journalism, you know, write the next best thing, music, write another song, you know, that song might be the big one. Producers make another beat. Um, runners run another race, you know, one more race. Um, cooks, you know, one more dish. Just keep keep kind of chugging along. And you're creating your own content now, like all, and it's like a huge community, right? I mean, it must be yeah. like such interesting Facebook groups, like really niche, like for fans of Purple Weed in Utah. You're like, oh, dude, I just know seventeen thousand people in this group, you know? Yeah, it's incredible, and I love it. You know, I love. I'm passionate about what I do. Obviously, I've been passionate. Have about Have you been interviewing really cool people for your podcast? It's been absolutely incredible. Like the podcast started off as something that I wanted to do. We wanted to do for our business to be able to, you know, obviously content marketing isn't great. And we are we are a marketing company. That's what we do, web design and payment processing, all that fun stuff for the cannabis industry. So it was something that we thought would be great and also to meet great people and to create great relationships. But it started off as something just to do. And to be honest with you, it's like taking on a life of its own. We're like up to, you know, over a thousand followers in different platforms and getting a few hundred uh, listens for every episode and that's tight man you know growing it little Regardless. by little and now people hit me up and they want to be on, on it, it. Mm -hmm. and people hit me up and they found our company through it and uh, you know that's tight you know so when someone's gonna be like well coach who's go oh yeah i know hustle beach podcast you're like oh wait what? yeah you know, that's, dude, beach? that's what that's i'm beach. talking about bro. That's that's beach. That's what i'm talking about yeah. hustle beach bro it's just one episode at a time one Life so yeah we got to hustle. interview cool people we, i get to meet the coolest people you know and it's honestly, selfishly, like, I get you to feel like, learn from them. Do you feel like you're a little bit outside them. the box in Israel? How so? Like, just doing what you're doing here? Totally. Yes and no. I mean, all my clients are in the States. We don't have any clients here. I wouldn't want to have clients here, necessarily. Um, but, but when I talk to people that I live in Israel, they get excited. They're like, mm. because, like I said, cannabis is like... Israel is the place for cannabis. People are like, oh, do you know Dr. Mishulam? Do you know, you know, oh, have you met Saul Kay? And all these different, um, a lot of real big um, researchers, influencers, leaders in the global cannabis um, infrastructure are based here in Israel. So it's, uh, it's really cool. It's really cool. I can sometimes think I'm like, yeah, man, sell some pot, you know? No, I'm kidding. I don't think of that. <laughs> Telegraphs. No one yeah. likes that. Oh, yeah. It's a telegraph. Oh, it's like gosh, a thing, right? It's like yeah. an Israeli app, right? Yeah. Don't Why don't people like it, it? Because, I mean, listen, I mean, I'm, I'm all about the CBD now anyways. I, you know, I used to smoke all day, every day. I don't even be lucky to catch me smoking that much anymore. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Like, I, I don't even smoke that much anymore, hardly ever. I, I'm all about the CBD. And I'm all about the, uh, you know, helping people to have the, the effects to do it. But um, that being said, um, I forgot the question, but. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, did you smoke before? I said, no. Yeah, no. I forgot what we were talking. What's this podcast about? Yeah, what are we doing? What's your name again? Yeah. The Ram Dog, Rami. No, and let's be more important. If you made it this far in the podcast, you are, you really, for guys don't know, uh, Maynard is in the schmoozing video. Schmoozing and for bringing the party. Boozing for bringing the party. Using Jewish. Jewish. That's what I'm Jewish. Jewish. Exactly. I'm Jewish. Yep, you are. <laughs> <laughs> so the he is like the tough, mean guy in the video, which is like in like the gang of or, of Orthodox Jews. He is like the one that knew how to do the acting. The other guys were all. Didn't know what I was saying because they don't speak English, but it was just, we were like, Baruch Hashem. One, of my, loves is hip -hop. one <laughs> yeah. of my loves is hip hop. Being in LA, Purdue, you know, obviously everybody's working in the industry. Speaking and of, produced, you know. speaking of, now totally switching it from schmoozing and you being in LA, speaking of weed, I opened for Wiz Khalifa the other day oh, in Utah. Yeah. And the chief of police came on stage and he like blew weed in his face and they shut the entire concert down. Wait, where was it? Where? Park City, Utah. Oh, in Utah, duh. Yeah, Good. they're like, you of smoking course. pot? You're going to prison, black man. Like, yeah, you know, you're like, uh, he should have just said, "This is CBD, baby." No. You know, they got CBD, uh, I mean, CBD flower. He could have just been like, "This CBD, it's federally legal now. Can't do nothing." He was on stage in the middle of his song where he was like, "Roll it up." Yeah, roll up that CBD. Why not? <laughs>
Could you do that? I don't even know. Yeah. Really? really? That's, that's hilarious. Man, but anyways, that must have been a scene. That was a scene. And uh, everyone's like, you know, that's what happens when you blow weed in the chief of police face. You know, they shut yeah. the concert down, which I assume is a pretty safe assumption for anywhere in the world. If you start embarrassing the chief of police and blowing weed in the drugs in his face, the guy's going to be like, uh, I was. you're kind of toast, buddy. <laughs> Um, listen, we're we can go on and on here about uh, the hustle. What's your podcast so we can listen to it? It's called Dank Discussions. Dank Discussions. That's cool. That's yeah. amazing. Does does like is there a prerequisite to like smoke weed to be listen to the show or anyone can no, listen? you know what? I'll tell you. It's it, if you want to learn about I think it's a good the name. current cannabis industry. Yes. I'm telling you, I know I'm a little biased, but we got some great shit, dude. And there's a lot of people who who are we get the podcast is actually catered for people who are in the industry who already know stuff. So like there's a lot of intro intro stuff, you know, this is the into endocannabinoid system and this is blah 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 and this is what's going on. But really it's like a lot of nuanced information in there. You know what I mean? Like talking about global markets, talking about uh C B D skincare, talking about um Awesome. Uh, everything. So it's Dank discussion Spotify, sounds cool. Spotify, Spotify YouTube, Apple, Apple Music. Google, You've got to give it a five star rating. Stuff. You know, yeah. listen to it, give it a thing. Um, so just real quick, give a shout out to all your socials so people can follow you. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, you can go, our website is calacan.com, C-A-L-A-C-A-N-N.com. Um, and there you can find the dang discussions. Um, you can also find it obviously, like I said, on Spotify, YouTube, uh, Apple, Google, but you have links to the website. It's called Dank Discussions and the, uh, the Instagram, Dank Podcast, um, Twitter, Dank underscore podcast. Someone else has Dank Podcast, apparently. Um, you know, I'm at Maynard Breslow. Um, we have at Calican. So we got many ways to find us, man, you know, and hit us up, dude. Slide in our DMs. We're always happy to talk and uh, we're always happy. Yeah, that's it. Boom. Tagging them right now, yeah, guys. Man. Right now, we're always happy to talk. We're always happy to um, to spread awareness. Um, we want to really bring awareness to what's going on in, in the industry. weed game. In the weed game, change what's the going legal on. weed legislation. Game. You know, regulation, um, making changes. Bars. Um, exactly, dude. <laughs> I felt like you was rapping right there. Legislation. Regulation. Memorization. Regulation. Memorization. Memorization. No, what, what no, no castration. I don't even know, man. Are you playing schmoozing? Um, yo, all right. So this is the end. Of, I think this is Hustle Beach episode number eight. And I'm really excited we're going to upload it. Um, I am Kosha Dills. I just got back from Sundance Film Festival opening for Wiz Khalifa and Naughty by Nature, Shwayze, Del the Funky Homo Sapien, and Miley Cyrus' sister, Brandy Cyrus, which was a really interesting show. Um, and now I am back in Israel with Maynard Press. Low or breast live like breast love, like the main of breast Breslo. Breslo. Yeah, Breslo. 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 You know, main of breast love, from the Ciudad of Mexico and Calabasas. And he is of uh, the, the Dank Discussions Follow his podcast. And I'm thinking I'm forgetting something. I'm supposed to shout out that I'll be at South by Southwest. So if you guys are down there and want to meet up at the Oyave Showcase, or if you want to support really dope stuff like this, hit the Patreon, patreon.com slash koshadills. I accept money, and um, that's basically what that site's for, for people to pay me while I stay up late and do podcasts for no apparent reason, all, all for free, just so you can digest it with all my friends. Um, Koshidilsworld.com, Maynard Breslow, Dank Discussions, Dank Podcasts, what a dank time, and great job in a schmoozing video, bro. Thanks, bro. Have really. Me, oh, thanks for having me, bro. I love it. Um, and we will see you guys next time. Make sure you follow this podcast on Spotify, download it, Anchor, SoundCloud, and um, iTunes, Gazillion Star Rating. And uh, that's it, guys. We will see you next week, next Tuesday on Hustle Beach. Hustle Beach! Peace. Hustle Beach! Peace. Hustle Beach!